The Lenovo Legion 5. Depending on your configuration, it's anywhere from an absolute balls to the wall mobile gaming machine to, well, just a reasonable, nice little value config. And we're gonna be looking at just that in both Intel and AMD variations today. And this video is sponsored by Lenovo. But first, a bit of background on the Lenovo Legion 5 laptop. They made it for gamers out there who want something that performs, but without the flash. So like a more minimalistic design for someone who wants to carry it around with them during the day for everyday tasks, but also use it for late night gaming sessions. It's cooled with their cold front 2.0 technology to prevent it from overheating and avoid thermal throttling. And we'll talk more about that later. Why don't we start with the Intel one? So let's get this unboxing on the road. This is the Intel one, right? Oh yeah, Intel inside. So this is a pretty moderate spec machine. Eight gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, a terabyte of hard drive space. I mean, you pretty much need that for a lot of the modern games these days. And we're rocking a GTX 1660 Ti. So no real time ray tracing or anything like that, but for eSports titles like Rainbow Six Siege, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you're gonna be having a pretty good experience. And that is, wait, is this how you are intended to unbox it? That's trippy. It like lifts the laptop up for you. Mm, let's see what we've got in here in terms of accessories real quick first. Got a beefy power brick right here, as well as the wall plug that goes into it. So it's a standard like PC style wall plug, same kind that would go into your desktop actually. So it'll do up to 230 watts. I guess that makes sense given that you can configure this bad boy with up to an RTX 2060. Let's get this puppy opened up. Oh, there we go. One of the standout features last time around when we were just looking at the Intel version of this machine was of course the cooling. So no matter how long we ran our game for, it never thermal throttled. And it's pretty impressive when you consider that it's not crazy thick like the gaming laptops of yore. Running Windows 10, obviously. Because what else would you run on a gaming laptop? USB type A, headphone jack, ventilation, ventilation. Actually kind of love the rear IO, especially for something like a gaming machine. So you don't have all of your ports like along the right where you're trying to move your mouse. Two more USB type A's, USB C, dedicated network port. Love to see that HDMI and of course Lenovo's power plug, more ventilation, more ventilation and one more USB type A. So it's loaded for bear as far as IO goes. For the screen, you can get up to a 240 Hertz Display HDR 400 certified display. It's apparently Dolby Vision capable, but since it's Display HDR 400 only, I would temper your expectations. The content will display correctly, but you're not necessarily gonna see the same kind of uh, range that you would on something like a thousand nit peak brightness TV, for example. Mobile devices still have a ways to go as far as HDR is concerned. Now let's have a look at which display option we got. That does not appear to be the 240 Hertz option. <laughs> That's okay, this is a more budget oriented build. Yes, this is the 60 Hertz version. So it's unlikely that it also has the same one millisecond response time of the 240 Hertz display. That is the one that I would definitely go to if you're going RTX 2060 or over and you're playing competitive games. Another key feature from last time is the True Strike keyboard. So it has 1.3 millimeters of travel. So that's pretty darn long travel for a laptop keyboard. It's got a really nice, not just sound, but also like kind of a bottoming out feel to it. It's, it's quite cushiony. Lenovo also made the decision while working with the Dolby team and placed the speaker at the bottom of the keyboard instead of the top. So this allowed them to make the trackpad larger without sacrificing sound quality. Of course, that's Intel. You guys want to see the AMD version, don't ya? Yeah, you do. I want to see the AMD version. Here we go, L's and G's. All right. I'm assuming it's the same power adapter. Wait, it's not. Because of its more pedestrian graphics configuration, the AMD version, at least the one we got, comes with only a 170 watt brick. So it's probably also uh, <clears throat> implicit praise for AMD's excellent power efficiency with their Ryzen 4000 series processors. It can be configured with up to a Ryzen 4800H, which is a pretty smoking little beast. This is such a game changing time right now. 
Like the fact that you can not only get and you know, a Ryzen laptop from a tier one OEM like Lenovo, not just that, but the fact that it gets the same quality of chassis and like build materials as the Intel version. Like guys, that was not a thing, not that long ago. Like this is exactly the same keyboard. Like, ah, it's freaking awesome. Now our config is a little bit lower on this one. It's a 1650 instead of a 1660 Ti, but that doesn't mean that it's not gaming capable. Actually, this looks like a smoother display as well. So this seems to be kind of like an eSports config. 120 Hertz, yep. Oh, cool. It's got a little um, camera covery slider doodad. Oh, I didn't even check exactly what CPU we're running on this config. 4800H with Radeon graphics. Eight core freaking 16 thread processor and a laptop. Love it. All right. We're gaming, we're recording, actually using the NVENC encoder on the GTX graphics card. And this is like match made in heaven here. We're running anywhere from 100 to 130 FPS. Hold on a second, I'm gonna take over one of my bots here. And this is on 120 Hertz display. And remember, this is while recording. Oh my goodness, did I just get killed by easy bots twice? Enough. This is what happens, I try to host a video while I'm trying to headshot New bots, come try and get your precious bomb, losers. To be clear, this is just, this is the unboxing first impressions experience. It's not a full review by any stretch of the imagination, but I still am curious if we're gonna see it like really ramp up and get loud. Honestly, I kind of doubt it in this config, especially. Man, I just died again. Wait, it's over? Bot Walt MVP. That's not bad, eh? That's a pretty low, that's a pretty low whoosh for a laptop. Uh, oh yeah, function Q. So you can switch between uh, quiet, auto, and like red line mode. Oh, there we go. All right, let's go to the red line then. Again, on this config, I think this kind of cooling system's barely even working at it. So I'm not expecting to see like a big FPS jump from adding more cooling. Yeah, it's about the same, okay. It also just didn't get any louder. Let's go to quiet mode. Man, these Ryzen chips. Cool, quiet. All right, should we try something a little heavier? Yeah. Uh, I don't know the controls of this game. That's not bad. 45 FPS in this game actually looks pretty good. It all comes down to how well the game dev is optimized for lower frame rates. And it's steady, which matters a lot. So this is running at medium 1080, not like a resolution scaled, upscaled 1080, like it's actually running at native 1080. I'm totally going the wrong way, aren't I? Okay. I made my way into a corner. <laughs> well, that's fine. All I really wanted to know is how the game runs. So you can definitely get away with medium at full 1080p with a little bit of settings tweaking if you want to hit like 50 plus 60 FPS. So now we know. Quiet. Oh, this is in quiet mode even. It was uh, function Q, right? Oh, the overlay is not uh, coming up for me. Oh, well. I think the light of the power button changes. So it does, look at that, it's color coded. All right, we're in balanced mode now. I would leave this sticker on forever. Yeah. That's the kind of sticker I just wouldn't remove. Now all that remains is to have a quick look at this cooling solution that's doing such a great job here. There we go. Not bad. And that's it, hey? Got these super thin fan blades on here. Apparently there's like 70 plus parts in this cooling system. It's like very, very OP, considering how, again, how efficient these Ryzen 4000s are. So what can we upgrade? We've got an M.2 here. Oh, okay, interesting. So there's, we've got a hard drive here. And, or you can remove the hard drive and you can install an M.2 across this gap here. Then you've got another M.2 here, and it looks like that's gonna be our Wi-Fi card right there. There we go. Not a ton to upgrade. Uh, in particular, you'll notice that there's no sodium memory slots. So if you don't think eight gigs of RAM is enough, which it may very well not be. Some games are actually asking for 16 gigs of RAM in order to even launch them. Then I would 
definitely advise you to order the 16 gig RAM version right out of the gate. So that's the Lenovo Legion 5 in both the AMD and Intel versions at the current specs that were sent to us, but you can configure and spec it to whatever you'd like to fit your needs at lenovo.com slash Legion. It's compact, minimalistic, and powerful, and you can game on it for hours without overheating thanks to its cold front 2.0 cooling system. So you'll find the link to where to check out both the Intel and AMD specs in the video description. Thanks again to Lenovo for sponsoring this video, and you guys, of course, for watching.